Well, we'll go ahead and get started with the interview workshop. And so thank you so much for coming back. It's fun to see repeat customers <laughs> coming, uh, coming back. So this actually is the most important one. And the interviews are, in my opinion, and many others, the most important part of your job search. Because many people get to the end and they bomb it. They don't know what they're doing. They choke up. They forget all their experiences and accomplishments. So this is by far the most important part. If you've networked well, if you've spent tons of time on your resume, but you can't interview, you may as well just go home and sit on the couch. <laughs> it's going to get the same amount of, of effort. So I'm, I'm just curious, what are your guys' interview experiences? Any really good experiences or bad experiences from interviews? And Patty, you can pipe in too if you've had any. <laughs> Gabe, you're pondering. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking most of my experiences have been pretty good because I've, uh, I've just been interviewing at little department stores and stuff like that where they're ready to hire you if you own pies. So. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence goes up. Yeah. yeah. You feel good going in. Anyone have any interview experiences? I'm sure someone's had a good interview or bad interview. I've had bad interviews. <laughs> I was thinking today, I had an interview for an internship when I was in college, and I dressed up really nicely, and I went down there, and I was super nervous. I didn't really answer the questions, so, and then they gave me a typing test, and that was the worst part, because during the typing test, uh, I thought it was supposed to be timed, and I had so many errors. It was in Microsoft Word, you could just see red all over, and I was freaking out, and the lady stopped me, she said, okay, slow down, and I still made tons of errors, and I knew I could type. And I, they gave me the job anyway. I think it's because I was friendly and didn't have any other candidates. But so I got lucky. But I don't know. Interviews are one of those things. I look back and I was just horrible because you're sitting there and you're sweating because you're doing a bad job and you know you're doing a bad job. So hopefully I'll give you guys some tips today that will benefit you for your future interviews. So I'm going to give you a couple takeaways for the end I like to give at the beginning so you can pay attention as you go through. The first thing is if you're not getting work, you probably can't interview unless you're just not networking at all. And interviews are the most important part of the job search. It's the last part. It is the most important. It's where you actually sell those skills you've been peddling the whole time. Second, it's a demonstration of your value to the employer. And this is absolutely critical. I'm going to hammer that a bunch. And lastly, you must practice. It's like absolute critical. I'd be willing to say like 60, 70% of your interview process should be research and practicing and preparing for the interview. Um, if you're not preparing for the interview, you may as well, you, you're going to fail. That's the biggest thing. You don't want to wing an interview. It's not like a speech you did in college when you kind of knew the topic anyway and you just showed up for 15 minutes with a group and you gave your five minute spiel and it was okay and you got a decent grade. You actually have to practice and prepare for it. So keep that in mind as we go through. So what I'm gonna to cover today is three parts. What to do before the interview, what to do during the interview, and what to do after. So we'll start with what to do before. So like I've said, if you fail to prepare, you may as well prepare to fail. Like the old saying goes, that can hold more true for interviews. The first thing you need to do is research. Do as much research before an interview as you possibly can. And we're going to talk a bit about how to do that research and some places to do it. Second, know your value proposition. Now, value proposition is essentially what you have to offer value to the employer. Why are they going to hire you? And third, practice answering questions. You should be familiar with the basic general interview questions that you should expect to be asked to be, and expect to be able to answer those questions well so you don't get stuck on that. Welcome. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to see you back. We're just talking about the first stages of what to do before an interview. And the main takeaway is prepare a bunch. <laughs> well, be on time <laughs> works too, but yeah. So research, know your value to the employer, and practice answering questions. Was that a question, Gabe? No. Oh, scratch. Yeah. So a couple ways to do research. There's three things you need to research in an interview. The first is research the company, and this is one of the most important. Second, research the interviewer. If you happen to know who is interviewing you, often you may. And third, research the actual job that you'll be applying for. So the first easiest place to do your research is the company website. Go to their website, 
read every single page, learn what they do, what's their mission, what's their values, how's the website designed, what does that say about the company? Are they on the cutting edge or are they super outdated? Do they even have a web designer? Is it from 1995 when the, inter when the internet came out? And research as much as you can, learn about their products and services so you know what they do. In an interview, the research you have is like ammunition. The more you have, the more effective you'll be in the interview. So go to the company website. All of you should know about LinkedIn as we talked about last week. Go to LinkedIn, research the interviewer, see what you can find out about them, and Google the company. See what's online. Go to the Puget Sound Business Journal. Are there any articles about the company? See if you can find a profile. What do they make a year? Who are their direct competitors. Learn a little bit about the company. This will by far give you an edge over the competition and is the best thing you can do for an interview. Second place to research is the job description. You most likely will have a job description. If you don't, you can email the recruiter and they'll send you one. And the job description is nice because it tells you what they're looking for, but I wouldn't stop it there. What I would do with the job description is take a blank sheet of paper, take a pen, draw a line down the middle. On the left side, write all the qualifications, requirements that they're looking for. So for example, if they want two years of public relations experience or a degree in communications, write that down. On the right-hand side, analyze the job description and to determine what you have that matches what they want. So if you have a bachelor's degree in communications, write that down. If you don't have a bachelor's degree in communications, but maybe you have in psychology, write that down. So you can kind of match yourself as close as possible to what they're looking for. Even if you don't have everything they're looking for, if you have the majority of what the job description entails, you have a good shot for the, for the, for the job. Often, job descriptions will say something like five to seven years experience, and that may be true, but you can interview for jobs I have that have required five to seven years experience, and I haven't had five to seven years experience in that job. So kind of take those with a grain of salt. Sometimes they're hard and fast, sometimes they're a little negotiable. But read the job description. That'll give you an indication right off the bat about what is valuable to the employer in this job. Why are they hiring? What are some of the needs and challenges that they expect you to have? That's a freebie. You should analyze the heck out of that and understand what they're looking for. And the main thing is determining what your value is matched up with what they're looking for. Couple other ways, so those are the basics. Then you should get a little more creative. Can you identify some of their clients? You should be able to do that if you're doing enough research. Who uses their services? Do you know any vendors who work with them? Can you talk to any of them or talk to someone who works there? Ask them about them about the company. What's their reputation? How do they work with their clients? Um, that will give you a good indication. Who are the competitors? You absolutely should know about the competitors. The clients may be a little harder to find, but if you're interviewing at a company, their competitors are also fair game for your future employment, so you should know who they are. And find out what's their reputation in the industry. How do they compare compared to their, to their industry? Are they competitive? Are they at the top? Are they failing and about to go under and you're gonna lose your job in two months when they do? Talk to current and former employees. This, once again, go on LinkedIn, type in your keywords, find someone who works at the company or previously worked at the company and get the ground level, the street level opinion of what it's like to work there. You can go on the website, they'll have their espoused mission and values, what they're about, and the great things that they're gonna do for the world, but they may or may not actually be having those practiced in reality. So who's gonna know better than the people who have worked there? I'll tell you, I had an interview last year where I contacted a girl who used to work at the firm I was interested in. It was a small firm, they had bare bones information other than their website. And so I ended up finding a girl who used to work in the position I was interviewing for. She lived on the East Coast now. I contacted her through LinkedIn and Facebook, talked to her for 30 minutes. She told me exactly what the challenges of the job were, what they would be hiring for, what it was like to work there, how quickly you can expect promotions. I mean, she gave me like the rundown. And that was valuable for me um, for two things. One, I was able to learn what they're looking for. <laughs> So I knew their business needs. I knew what they're hiring for. I knew some of the challenges. I knew what made a successful applicant and candidate in that position. Secondly, I was able to determine based on what I know about myself that it would be a good fit and all the things and challenges they said are challenges I know I could do and I was very confident that I would be a good fit for this position based on the job description I had and talking to her. And that for me was the most valuable. When I had the actual interview, 
it was so amazing to me how well prepared I was just by talking to her for those 30 minutes and it really gave me the edge in the interview and the interview went, is probably the best interview I've ever had and the reason is because I've talked to someone who works there. So if you can, talk to someone who works there. It's, even if they, they don't work there currently, that is like your best, your best bet. Um, and so what if they tell the company that you talk to them, hey, Dan just contacted me to research the company. Oh, well, what does that show? Dan's interested in this job enough to go hunt someone down. So some people often say, well, uh, it's kind of iffy. Well, if you don't feel comfortable talking to someone who currently works there, find a past employee. And if it gets back to the company, it only works in your favor. Patty, I think you had a comment. No, no, I was thinking it also shows you're really resourced. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's a good point. And so, so if the way you go about your job search and to find them and do your research shows them what type of employee you're going to be. And the interview is really about proving to them that you can do the job and add value to them. So those are just a couple ways. I'm sure you can probably think of a lot more creative ways to find people or talk to them, but do as much research as you can on the company beforehand. Hello. And that's gonna be your biggest weapon. Any questions about that? So secondly, I talked about how to research companies. What are employers looking for? Well, every employer has different things, but it really boils down to three components. One, can you help them make money, save money, or make their life easier in some way? And I know some of you are thinking, well, what about church or nonprofit? Well, they're still organizations and they have to run a business. I don't care what they're doing. If it's a nonprofit, they have to make sure they're within their budget and they're going to hire you to help them out. No one hires you for charity. Even in a volunteer position, they're going to hire you because you have something to contribute or because you're interested in the topic. And so no one is gonna hire you to develop your skills or help you become a better worker or advance your career. Forget that, they're hiring you to help them and bring them value. So can you make the money? How have you made money for past employers? These are questions you should ask yourselves. How can you bring in money? Do you understand the industry and their needs and have creative innovative ways to increase their services? Can you save the money? Have you ever helped streamline something in the organization? Do you do what you do effectively? Are you a hard worker? Is your work gonna be faster than someone else's so that you save them time and money because they're on a tight budget, especially these days? Can you make their life easier to help them make or save money? Can you solve problems? How have you solved problems? Do you need a lot of training? Are you gonna come in and take six months to ramp up or are you gonna hit the ground running right away and be able to contribute quickly as opposed to having your hand held for up to a year? These are questions they wanna know. They also wanna know, are you going to be easy to manage and work with? People like to work with people that they like. And often people say, We're, we promote diversity and equal opportunities, and that's true, but when it comes down to it, we'll take a diverse person if we like them because they're going to work well with us and it's just going to make our lives easier. And subconsciously, they're still thinking that no matter what their website says or what they tell you. So people want to know if you're going to be a good fit, if you're going to make their life easier, and in the end, how are you going to affect the bottom line? So if you, the, the, the main reason this is critical is most people don't understand how their job fits in with the overarching mission of the organization. If you can show them that I understand how my job fits in and can help your company by making your life easier, taking the, the pressure off you as a manager or your team, you have an advantage because that when everything boils down to is why you have a job. You have a job to help them out. Not just, they're not hiring you to provide for your family get your kids an education, or develop yourself as an individual. They're hiring you to help them out in some way. They're hiring your skills and abilities. And when you really boil it down, that's what it comes to. So keep that in mind as you interview. If your job and challenge knowing this is to determine how can you portray to them that you have the value you can add to help them accomplish one of these three things. And if you can do that, you'll be successful in the interview process. Comments? You said one of oh. these three? Um, all of those three, okay. <laughs> yeah. If, if you can understand how you can affect those three, then you're gonna be in a good shape. Okay. And they're really similar. I mean, making money or saving money is the same as making money because it's it's more money for them. So, <laughs> and, and for, for managers, that's what they're, they're really concerned about. They have a budget they have to adhere to. So, good, good, uh, good comment though. So. Adding value, I'm super good at math, not really, so I gave you guys a really complex formula. Your research, combined with your self-knowledge, 
is your value to the value to the employer. So the first thing you do, like we talked about, is do the research. Know what they're looking for through your job description, talking to other people, what have you. Once you know what they want, determine what you have that matches it. It's about morphing yourself to them, not trying to see how they can benefit you. And that is the value that you want to tap to them. That's your value proposition. What makes you um, valuable to them. If you want to go above and beyond that, try to think of what you have that's valuable in a unique way different than other people. So let's say a physician wants you to be organized, disciplined, and have detail and orientation. And you say, sweet, I've got those things. You want to harp on those in the interview. But maybe you're also someone who's really proactive and takes on new projects and finds new ways to accomplish tasks quicker. Okay, that's your edge. Sell those first three things, but sell that last part because that's what's going to take you above the, the, the other candidate who was smart enough to you know, pitch themselves to the job description. So identify what your value is based on what they're looking for. The way I think of this is like a grocery store. Grocery stores are smart. I go buy food. Let's say I'm hungry. They know Dan's hungry. So what does Dan want? Dan wants food. We're going to give Dan food. Same way. What do they want? What do I have to give to them? That is what your value is. And that's why I buy cereal from the grocery store. <laughs> so does that make sense? It's pretty, really complicated calculus. Um, I'm amazed that I put together. But so with your value, one thing I actually took this from Patty is pretend you have cards. Identify your value, the three to five things about you that are most relevant and compelling to the job. And if you've done your research well, you should know that. And essentially write quote unquote cards. So when you go to the interview, your goal is to get all your cards on the table. These are based on your 360 degree research and your unique blend of talents and experience. So when you go in the interview, pretend you've got those cards right in your pocket and your goal is to get them on the table one at a time. That's your agenda. Your agenda is to make sure that they know all those things about you as you go along. So the whole time, even if it's right at the last minute, make sure you get those cards on the table. Do your research, figure out what you have that matches up with what they want, and this just hammer that into them. Put those cards on a table again and again and again. When they answer, when they ask you a question, you respond, and then you talk about how something you have, one of your cards, matches that. But be nimble if you're going in an interview and all of a sudden you realize, well, shoot, I, uh, I misread the company and that's not really what they're looking for. I try to work on your feet. But if you've done good research, you'll probably know exactly what they're looking for. And they'll be pretty transparent about that too. Any questions about that? Most people don't do enough research. They, they just go into the interview, they look at the website a little bit, and they practice answering questions. And you need to practice answering questions but if you don't do research, you're not going to have the advantage, especially these days if you're competing against candidates who are smart and maybe are good enough to wing it on their feet and just think nimbly, you absolutely want to have your research. So for example, if you were in college, if you do a presentation, you don't just go and do it. You may be able to do it well, but if you practice, you'll be a lot smoother. You can know what you're doing. Same thing for an interview. Never go in winging it. Maybe we'll address yeah. this a little bit later, but I find that there's how to avoid like just the buzzwords, like particularly looking at job descriptions and stuff. Everybody's looking for the same. They're self-starters. People who are organized. People who are think for themselves. Like it's the same things that they're looking for. And how to to craft selling yourself your cards in a way that's really what they're looking for, but that you're not sounding, that, that you're just pitching the job description back to them, <laughs> you're not sounding the same that everybody else yeah. is, but you're still, but you're also not deviating so much from the job description that you're really not, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. so you're not just using the same jargon that everybody Yeah, so it's is. not just, well, what, what, what do you think we're looking for? Well, it says someone who's responsible right. and, I'm responsible oh yeah, I'm yeah. I'm that's me, good. exactly, that's a good question. So if. The way I look at it is, those are like those general skills. Everyone says they're a team player. Everyone says they have great leadership. What does that even mean? Everyone says they have great interpersonal skills. Half of them don't. But the, the thing is, if you've done enough research, you'll know. The best thing I can, I got, I'd answer that, and we'll probably talk about a little more too, is identify the business needs. So if they need, if, why is that position open? You know, if you can find out why that position is open, 
do they always have turnover? Is it just a position that people aren't consistent in? They're probably going to care about that. They're probably going to care about the fact you're consistent. If you know what their business needs are, then you don't. You can use that. You can use the buzzwords with it, but you go a little deeper. So you say, "Oh, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very loyal to a company. I'm very reliable." And then you could actually give examples as opposed to just, "I'm reliable. Hire me. Job description me. We match up. Good deal." Uh, is that can help a little bit? A little bit, like so, giving examples and actually like, and how matching yourself to the descriptors, I guess, is how to mm-hmm. how to follow through on that. So I mean I'd use the job description as the as the first part, but really talk I mean talking to people is what's really going to give it. So let's say they I mean they want someone who's a team player and give examples for that. That's I mean probably everyone's gonna go and say they're a team player, but if you can give example that you're a team player and talk about how you've been a team player and how what what it resulted in, that's going to be probably a little more compelling. So I'm trying to think of a position, for example, that I, I interviewed for. I talked to someone. And they want someone who um, could handle a variety of tasks simultaneously. Um, and so as I, as I, I mean, everyone's going to say, oh, I can handle multiple unrelated tasks simultaneously. But as I, what I really learned with them is they had several lines of business. And depending on what the project comes in, you're going to be shifting your workload. So then it made me think, okay, well, that's what I have to pitch it to. I'm not just using the buzzwords. I'm going to give them examples about how I can handle multiple unrelated tasks or set up projects and go with the flow and roll with the punches and still get it done. Um, Patty, you No, no, I think that's a good example. To tell a story, because past experience is a really good predictor of future experience. Mm-hmm. So if you can tell, and Dan will get into this a little later, on how to tell a really good compelling story that illustrates that you have those skills where you talk about a situation, and I don't want to get ahead of it, but yeah, there's so, a really effective way to communicate those skills, because you're right, everybody can, anyone can say, I'm good at multitasking, or I'm you know, really organized, or I'm a self-starter. Yeah, yeah, and so you can say you're self-starter, but then back it up with, this is what I've done in my last year, where this is how, and, and that's good because they're going to want you to use those buzzwords, but then if they see you have substance beneath it. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. It's like answering like with examples instead of just yeah. one worded type of thing. Exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> you hit it right in the head. In fact, that's the next slide. <laughs> so how many, so probably many of you have heard of PAR, which is a, a, a way to answer interview questions. And many interviews these days are moving towards behavioral interview questions. Behavioral interview questions essentially not just Oh, are you good at customer service? Yes, I'm great, but give me an experience of a time you gave great customer service. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The main thing is it's, it's actually been found that if you ask candidates behavioral questions consistently, uh, it's better defendable in court if you try to sue them. And it has more predictive, it's more predictive of, of, a, of a good candidate for the job. So more and more companies are asking behavioral questions. And they're, it's good to ask them because they're harder questions and they get more to the meat of what the person's about. The way to combat that and to actually be able to express yourself um, in that situation is using this variety of acronyms, but one of them is PAR, Problem, Action, Result. So like you're saying, Jamie, speaking in examples, and so maybe someone says to you, tell me of a time when you handle a difficult client. And you say, okay, in your mind you're thinking, you identify a situation, so you start, you don't say it, but you, you start talking about the problem, the challenge you faced, what, uh, what, 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 was, what was the big difficulty going on, the actions that you took, what did you do to remedy the situation, how did you get involved, and then the results. What are the outcomes for the company? Not just, I felt good afterwards, but, oh, there's this big issue, I handled it this way, in the end the boss was happy, the clients were happy, and we were able to save some money. Whatever it is, and all of us have lots of stories like that. So the thing to do is write out a bunch of PARs. We're going to be giving you guys a list of typical interview questions that you can expect to field. And what I would do is pick out a few, maybe 10, and write down a PAR statement for each from your past experience. And this will absolutely help you for future interviews because you'll never have to do it again. When you interview again and again, and they ask you the same question everywhere you go, you'll just pull it out before the interview and read it and recall that experience and tell a story because stories are more memorable. I don't know if any of you have ever been to a church service and the pastor 
is a really good speaker and tells good stories, you remember the stories. You don't might have remembered any of his points, but you remember that story about when he was a kid in Wyoming doing whatever. You're like, well, that's just weird. I remember it. But you might not remember the guy who had really good doctrine and he just gave you point by point. So if you tell stories, it's just more memorable. For some reason, that's how humans work. And if you can tell a compelling story related to something for the job and you know what they're looking for, so you can kind of craft a story that shows them how you would operate in their company, that's very compelling. So I thought it'd be maybe useful to give an example. Can I just say one thing too about that? Also, you can start a running document because often you can have a power story that happens in a day or even an hour or maybe you have a difficult customer and you are a problem and in the course of an hour or two you end up resolving that issue so each time you know as you're going through the course of the day in your current job um, and as you if, if you kind of have your trigger like oh that might be a good one to use in an interview you can just have a running word document that documents well this here's another you know uh, problem and then here were the actions i took and here was the result so you can, it's not, you can have a running document where you can have multiple examples to be ready to use should you have to go on an interview or look for a new job or even in the course of um, while you're looking for a job, if you're volunteering or um, out interacting in the public, you can have some par stories from those as well. That's an awesome example. I'm glad you mentioned it. I know actually my future father-in-law told me to do that a year and a half ago and I did and I have like a 20 page document out because I do that every time something happens. I write it down and then when I have an interview I look back and I go, oh, it's cool for me to be like, oh my gosh, I did something really cool in my last job. Yeah, oh, I did something cool. Or, or you write your resume like, shoot, how many, how many clients did I take care of? Oh, the number's right there. Yes. So <laughs> that's an awesome, awesome idea. On, on a side note, if you're in a, if you're actually in a company, that's good to do anyways. Because in like a month before you review, set up an appointment with your boss and say, you just want to go, you know, talk about what, how I can help you next year, and you can kind of go over some of the great things you did because they forgot about them. And right before review time, psych psychologists call it the recency effect, more likely to boost your ratings. So <laughs> yeah, it's helpful for interviews and <laughs> performance <laughs> reviews. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a little role play I'm gonna do with Patty, and we'll give you an example of two different ways you could answer behavioral-based questions. So if Patty or I are in an interview, thank you, Patty, for, for coming today. To sure, come on up here. <laughs> I have Patty's question for her. Now we need to turn up the heat. Well, Patty, thank you so much for coming today. It's a pleasure to have you in. We're really excited to see if you're a good fit. I'm, I'm curious, one question we ask everyone who comes in is, I'd like you to tell me about a time in your life, it could be work or personally, came up against a roadblock. I'm curious, what did you do to overcome it and get around it? Hmm. That's a good question, man. An example that comes to mind is about 12 years ago when I was getting in the career development field, I wanted to explore opportunities in the outplacement industry, and so I had a contact at a company that uh, that had an office here in Bellevue, it was a national company, and they did outplacement. And I went on an informational meeting with the, my contact, and in the course of the meeting, I you know, said, well, what do you think of my qualifications, kind of at the end. And she said, well, your qualifications are good, but you're really lacking in this one area. So uh, following that meeting, I went out and got some additional training, and probably about six months later, I went in and interviewed and was offered the job. Well, that's incredible. It shows a lot of drive and determination, Patty. <laughs> yeah. So there's an example of a par situation where she gave me the problem. She was interviewing in a new field. She knew some of the company. She went in. She told me about the actions she took when she found out that she had a gap in her skills. She went and remedied that gap, filled it, and then came back and was, actually got the job. So as an employer, I'm thinking, wow, Patty's tenacious, and she has goals and she makes sure she gets them. If she doesn't succeed the first time, she's gonna go back and do it. So we'll try again, I'll ask Patty to do the question and we'll see how she responds in a non-par format. Oh no, so that was my... Oh, that was that your non-par. Non oh, I wanna hear the good one now. I'm gonna do this too long, okay. Cool. So Patty, tell me about time. She was, she's good for a bad interviewer. <laughs> Dang career counselor. <laughs> Patty, tell me about a time in, in your life when you came up against a roadblock and 
What did you do to overcome that and get around it? Okay, about 12 years ago, when I was getting in the career development field, I wanted to get into the outplacement field, and I had a contact at an outplacement company, and I set up an informational meeting, and in the course of the meeting, I said, you know, how, how do my qualifications look for working for your company? And she said, well, your qualifications look fine, but you're really lacking in a background in training, doing training, facilitating work and presenting workshops to outplacement clients that we have. So after that meeting, I went and did some research and found, identified its five-day training program called the Pentable Strengths at the University of Washington, and I paid the money and enrolled in the five days. And at the end of the five days, I got a certification where I was qualified to go out and actually present workshops. Mm. So I got in touch with the uh, hiring manager and let her know that I'd gone through the training. And in the while at the training, I connected with a couple other participants, and we went out on our own and offered um, these workshops on dependable strengths to friends and friends of friends, and we probably uh, facilitated and presented two or three. We also presented one at a social service agency. Wow. And um, then I ended up doing a couple as an intern at the University of Washington for their alumni. And each time I do the workshops, I um, get in touch with the hiring manager and just give her a little update about what I was um, up to. And about eight months after that initial meeting, there was an opening, and she called me, and I went in for an interview, and I was offered the job, and I worked there for six years. Excellent. So <laughs> Patty actually gave pretty good answers for both of them. <laughs> Let's give Patty a hand. <laughs> But you, you can see the second one, she obviously gave a lot more detail. She told about the specific training she did and how she went actually off. I didn't know that story, so that's actually really cool, Patty. <laughs> so what we're going to do, Patty's going to pass out a list of potential questions. And I want you guys to practice doing your own par. So what I want you guys to do is take 10 minutes, pick a question that you think you've been asked or maybe you've even had trouble with an interview in the past and write out a par. Write in detail as much as you can the problem situation from your past experiences, the actions you took and the results that came with it. So what we're gonna do is write one of those and in about in 10 minutes we're gonna get back together and partner up and practice with each other and give each other feedback on it because I want you guys to actually see how this is done and give each other feedback. So if you're one of those people who writes really quickly and you get done in five minutes, write too. You're gonna to keep it for your interviews in the future anyway. So any questions about that before we start this? Gabe's ready with his paper, go. <laughs> All right, well let's pull back together. Hopefully it was good for you to practice actually speaking to each other and practicing your pars. Obviously, you just wrote them, it's not supernatural. One of the best things to prepare for an interview, which I highly encourage you to do, is do a mock interview. So when you find a job you're interested in or find a few job postings of jobs you could see yourself doing in the future, and give them to a friend, come see Patty or I, and do a mock interview. Have that friend look at the job description, give them a list of questions you think they might, they might ask, and ask them to put their own in based on what the job entails, and have them actually grill you as if it's an interview in practice. Because you, I heard all you guys talking and some of you guys had some really cool stories, but you don't think of them all the time. You don't tell your friends about them all the time because you're not arrogant. And so you don't practice telling your accomplishments and, and good stories. So do a mock interview or do a couple. It's probably one of the best ways to get you sharp. And what I would suggest is go write down 10 pars. And every time you do an interview, write down a couple more. If you think of something, write it out. It doesn't have to be super long. It could be really quick bam to the point, really impactful. But if you have a list, you can keep that list forever. I know one professor on campus and he and I were talking about how he, someone here had told him to use the PAR when he was applying for at, like at Boeing years back and how he, he still keeps his PAR list today because anytime he has an interview, he pulls out and goes, oh, this is what I did at Boeing, huh? Hmm. Okay, good. I know they're gonna ask me something about there. I know they're gonna ask me something about that company. So make a list and keep them. The nice thing is once you have them, you never ever have to do them again. And if you have to do a resume, you have some accomplishments there too. So make sure you practice it as much as possible. And that's gonna be a big advantage. 
So the transition invariably. Well, can I say oh, one, yeah. this one other okay. thing? Um, just to put a little plug for some resources at the Career Development Center. This is a great book. It's a local career counselor. His name's Tom Washington, and it's called Interview Power. And we have about four copies that students, I know some of you are current students, um, are able to check out. But you can probably get a really cheap copy on Amazon or go sit in Barnes and Noble or come you're welcome to come to us to this um, to the Career Development Center and say Patty said I could take this down and <laughs> Patty said. A cup of <laughs> and read the highlights. It's a real real very easy read, but I, I highly recommend this book because it really he, he kind of helps you develop really interesting, powerful stories and he's got some I was just reading it, you know, and really good instructions on how to sell yourself in an interview. And then the other uh, tool that we have in our uh, Career Development Center Resource Library is are these uh, interview survival kit and there are uh, over 50 tips and strategies to help you, you successfully ace an interview. And what's neat is it'll have like, um, um, what did, you know, why did you choose your major? And then on the back, it has tactics. Provide a solid story detailing how your major supports your long-term goals and interests. Explain how your classes taught you to think critically. These are very nifty little mm -hmm. cards. And we um, we have like half a dozen copies of the, or sets of these, and then also I think they sell for five or ten dollars. Yeah, and that, that list of cards is a good thing too. You have a friend in Greeley, you just say, okay, keep asking me questions and try to give them an answer. Um, I don't know, I'll just say it anyway. That book, Interview Power, he has a website and he has the book posted online. It's HTML, so it's not going to be in a nice book format, but it's um, Google Tom Washington, that's the guy, or email me and I'll, I'll give you, you can find his book online and it is a good book. It tells you how to, how to communicate well in stories to answer your question, because I mean, use those buzzwords with a, a, a nice story to back up. I heard you had a good one, so... Um, <laughs> that, that's uh, the, one of the best ways to communicate. Well, so. one other thing, a good interviewer can see through, I've, I've, my boss said she hired someone one time because they interviewed really well and um, she learned after that one time that it, she has ways of getting around. Yeah. Someone can go in and, and can really interview well, but there, there are ways that they can dig a little deeper and I think this book can help you really on your own go beyond just the, you know, what is the right, correct answer and really, you know, have your true value and uh, can tell really good stories that illustrate your key skills and the value that you would provide the potential employer. Yeah, so invari invariably, thank you Patty, you're going to come up against a situation where you're switching careers or you're a recent grad and you don't have lots of experience. So everyone always asks this question, what do I say if I don't have an experience? So there's three strategies we're going to give you, obviously not exhaustive because you guys are probably a lot more creative than me so you can think of a lot more. The first one is talent versus experience. So if someone asks you, do you have any experience doing this, and instead of saying no, you could talk about how while you don't have direct experience, you are very quick to learn, you are nimble on your feet, and you pick up things really quickly. You're resourceful, you're proactive, and you know what? I might not have experience in this, but I know I can pick it up quickly because in the past I've been able to pick up things quickly. And yeah, I don't actually know this software system, but I've picked up many software systems in the past. It's a breeze to me. I integrate quickly into the system. So you can talk about how you have talent versus experience and how, well, you know what, I may not know, I can pick it up quickly and I am confident I can continue to deliver results for you again and again repeatedly. So talk about how you have just raw ability because experience, many people can have it and it doesn't mean that they actually um, have good talent, but if you have good talent, you can pick up the experience and be taught to do it. Second, oh yeah, great. I was just gonna say that also you could add in with the talent if it's something you like to do, say like I, yeah, I really enjoy doing this. Or that. And that'll be an excellent example for you because your psych major wants to go to IT. So you can mention, yeah, I'm, I'm a psych major, not super related, but I love this stuff. It's my passion. I do it on the side anyway. So yeah, that's. I mean, you, you can talk about your aptitude for it too. That's an excellent excellent comment. Second thing to do is talk about you have, how you have similar experience. So. Well, you know, in my last position, I had something very similar. Maybe you had the same underlying process, different task. And you could talk about how you approached that task. Use a par again, talk about the problem, action result. Talk about how you've had similar experience or, 
you know, maybe you don't actually have direct experience. We say, you know, my last position as, as an administrative assistant, I had a lot of exposure to what was going on with the engineers, maybe an engineering major, and I got to see what they did, and I, I really understand their what, what the, the challenges that they face. So if you don't have experience, you can talk about how you've done things similar, or you have broad exposure and understand their needs. Last one, you can volunteer. So I wouldn't say do this all the time, but occasionally you can say, if, you're, if you really want the job and you think they're kind of unsure about whether you can do it or not because you may be missing a gap, you can say, okay, let's do this. You can test me. I'll work for you for free for a couple weeks and it'll be kind of a trial run for you and me and you'll see how I work and I guarantee I'll be able to hit the ground running and I'll prove to you that I'm, I'm worth your time and your money. So that's one way to do it and if you don't have any experience and you leave the interview, you know, it's kind of like, how do I get experience without experience? Go volunteer somewhere. For example, I have a lot of people who say, I want to get into event planning, event coordination. Well, are you a member of a church? I'm sure they have some sort of program or event that you could coordinate and it doesn't have to be paid for it to be experienced. So go get, go volunteer if you don't have the experience. Or you can even, and I've heard people getting jobs and they've, they've done a trial run and then the, the person sees that they're actually valuable and says, okay, we should hire this person. So... Patty, what do you think of that? No, I think it was just reminded me of a, we have an admin in the, one of the, the department that is our umbrella, and uh, they went through a couple people that weren't a good fit, and so most recently they had somebody come in, I'm not sure if she worked for free, but it was on a trial. I heard, well, they've got someone just that's, they're trying out, and vice versa, just to make sure it's a fit for a couple weeks. And, I find this last one did stick, but she got the opportunity to see what the job was like, and they got to see the opportunity, you know, the, the opportunity to see what she was like and if they meshed. And so if you can't agree to a, a non-paid trial run, you can say, hey, let's do a prohibitionary period where we'll, we'll make an agreement that this is just a test run, kind of like a courtship. We'll see if we're a good match for each other, and we'll go from there. So, yeah, I, I keep you... By the way, dating and job searching... The similarities are really eerie, <laughs> so <laughs> just keep. I'll mention that again later. But so that's that, that. That those are a couple strategies you can use to get around the. I have no experience in this field. How do I get some? One question, if that's all right, on the uh, yeah. trial run. I was under the impression that that was a little bit uh, legally sticky and that sort of thing. Depends on the company. <laughs> so yeah. you can check with them. I was thinking that too, which is why I think this mm. situation I talked about SPU, they did, she was paid. Um, so yeah, it could. Yeah, so I, actually I'm not sure about the volunteer, but I do know often companies do like a, a prohibitionary period with it where they test temps. you. Come again? Temps. Just like yeah. temps, yeah. So it's like, okay, we're going to try you for 90 days or a year. And if you work well, we'll, we'll hire you. And actually, temp work is a great way to get on at companies because you get on, you show them you're good, and they're hiring. Was that a question? No. Oh, no worries. <laughs> good question, though. So, yeah, uh, the, the volunteer part may not be – if you're going for an internship, you can usually volunteer for free. <laughs> but for, for a job, there might yeah, there might be something. But you can usually do a prohibitionary period where, where you still get paid, but they're under no obligation if they decide to let you go for no reason <laughs> after X amount of time. So yeah, good comment. I should check into that though. Um, to move on, asking questions. This is, I think, one of the most important parts of the actual interview process. So let's say you've gone through the questions. Most interviews will probably be, be approximately an hour and they'll ask you questions for about 40 minutes. At the end, they'll give you about 10 to 20 minutes, usually about 15, and they'll say, do you have any questions for us? The worst thing you can say is no. Because supposedly you've done a lot of research. We already talked about that. If you've done a lot of research, even if you've done a ton of research, you've talked to every single former employee, which you probably can't do, you're going to have some questions. And if you've done good research, you should have even more questions. So by saying no, it's communicating to the employer that you really don't care about the job too much. Otherwise, you want to know so there's something you want to know about it. You want to know how the people are. You want to know what the hours are. You want to know what... What, what my office is going to look like. You have some sort of question. So always have at least three questions. And um, Patty, could you pass out there? There's a list with questions to ask in an interview. And I guarantee you all these ones will work. There is no behavioral or non-behavioral here. But asking questions is one of the, the best things you can do because it shows that you've done your research. So you should ask questions that are based on your research 
to set you up for success. So instead of asking questions like, gee, what are your, uh, what are your benefit packages like? Which by the way, you should never ask. Never ask questions about yourself. Never ask about their salary, the benefits, the days off, work-life balance. What's, I mean, don't ask those questions. The closest you can get ask is what's the culture like here. You ask all those questions once they give you an offer. How many of you have a friend who just likes to talk about themselves all day? Everyone has one. We all know someone. If you have one of those friends, pretend that's who's interviewing you and it's all about them. The interview is all about the employer. You're there to help them make money, not you. You're there to help them succeed, not you. So ask some questions about how you can help them out, not about what you can get for yourself. So that's, that's a caveat. But always ask good questions. So a couple of the questions I gave in there as examples, one of them would be, like, what's the position, what's the reason for this position opening up? If they tell you, well, people can't stick with this job, we, you know, it's, it, we, have a, we have high turnover, it's really stressful, and let's say you still think you can do the job and you want it, you can talk about, you know what, that's your opportunity to say, oh, okay, great. Some people can we'll leave it at that, but you can take it a step further and say, well, that's, that's interesting you say that because the last few jobs I've had, I've had to work under extreme pressures and I've really thrived in a fast paced environment. So I think I'd be a really good fit for this and actually be able to help you out. So the way I look at it is, ever played t-ball, take the ball, put it on the tee and you smack a home run, you don't have to do anything. Even I can hit a home run and I suck at baseball. So you ask them a good question, one, it shows you've done your research and it impresses them, but then you set up for just, their response is a t-ball to home run for you. So questions such as, what are the biggest challenges, challenges that someone would face in this role? And then they'll tell you, and then that gives you an opportunity to put your cards back on the table and tell them how you can meet their needs. Other good questions would be something like, so what would it take for me in this position for you to look back in six months and say you made a great hire? Well, they're already just gonna tell you there what a good candidate looks like and what your expectations are. What's the first 90 days look like? What's the first 100 or you know, uh, 30 days look like? What are the major things you wanna accomplish in this position? What are the challenges I will need to accomplish? Are there any barriers or other things I don't know of? What you're doing at this point is showing that you're interested in the ground level, what matters to them, the business needs. You're curious about how you can help them, not just going in there and doing a job. And if you ask your questions, this can be where you really shine in the interview. Maybe you've done pretty well at this point, you just like knock out of the park, and so you end well. So I'd ask a question and always give a response and talk about how you're hopefully prepared, you know about yourself, you know your cards you all put on the table and show them how you can add value to them right away. And you're just, you're just essentially leading them to a good question. Plus, maybe you're curious, what is success? What does success look like in this position? What will I have to do? So you learn about that. It also shows them that, that you've researched, you ask good questions. Oh, and if you ask good questions, that's how you're gonna act as an employee. You're gonna ask the specifics, you're gonna find out what's needed, and you're not just winging it. So always ask questions, ask at least three, based on your research and set yourself up for home run. Take this, this list with you. Um, you can use some of these questions in any interview, but the best thing is based on what you know of the job of the company. Questions? Yes. Is it always a bad thing to ask a question you already know the answer to? Give me an example. Is this something like they gave me the answer to earlier? <laughs> um, I guess I'm thinking if I found a company and was able to get in contact with somebody who worked there. In fact, small company, the guy who had it, the job six months ago. <laughs> and I wanted, would I still ask, uh, you know, what, uh, what kind of has caused this position to become open or what, what yeah. problems have you had with people had this job for? A, a question like that I'd ask is let's say the guy who left and talked to you said, uh, I left because it's really bad, the company and they treat their people like like dirt, and the employer tells you, well, you know, it's just been a really tough economy, and uh, that's why people have left. We usually keep people, and we'll actually you know that they kept going. Well, then you can gauge the employer's integrity to see if it's something you want to work for. But if you ask, if you already know the answer, ask them anyway. Set yourself, set yourself up for success, and you'd be curious to, to know to know what their answer is. I mean, maybe they have a, a different answer than than what you than what you've been given. So I would I would definitely ask that question. 
Um, I had something else to say with that, and I, I totally forgot. But that's that's a good question, Gabe. Um, yeah, if if you have information about the company, feel feel free to ask. Or yeah, that's what I say. You can even frame it such as, you know, from what I understand about this position, I gather that this might be a challenge for you guys. Is that true? So you can phrase it like that as opposed to, is this a challenge? And then he's thinking, okay, Gabe already knows it's a challenge. Yes, Gabe, there's a challenge, and he'll go into it more, and then you can tee up again. <laughs> so keep playing home run derby. Does that answer that question, though? Yeah. Well, I'll definitely, I'll definitely. I mean, if nothing else, going to give me <laughs> free question for you. Other questions about that? Make sure you at least have, like, five questions. I usually have more, and I'll write a list of questions for the interview and after. Maybe they go straight to offer there and say, you know, we want to hire you. Okay, um, wow, now I need those questions about the benefits and salary and stuff, so I keep those on a separate sheet of paper and just keep them with me. So, a couple things. It's like a first date. How do you act? A few tips to do in the interview. First, dress to impress. We talked about last week in networking. Make sure you're dressed business, not business casual, business formal, and dress better than you think you need to. Don't wear any colognes. Heavy perfumes, scents, so overly do your makeup. I kid you not, I was working uh, HR and we had one girl at our company who was very allergic to like lotions and any scent and she'd break out in hives. So how awkward would that be if your interview, your cologne or perfume gives them an allergic reaction? <laughs> so I, I would highly recommend not doing that. Leave your cell phone in the car because it's awkward if it goes off. Brush your teeth, have chew some gum before. Seriously, I mean, you're going to be talking to these people up close. Yes. <laughs> um, you told me what business casual was last time. What's what in business? So like I'm business casual. Right. Business formal would be like a tie and a, a coat to match my pants. Yeah. <laughs> that would be business formal. Show sorry for at least the gentleman. Patty could probably give the ladies a better. You guys probably already know. I'm not gonna pretend I know women's fashion. So. <laughs> I lost my fiance for that. <laughs> Secondly, be on time. You want to be, I usually show up at least 15 minutes early and go in five minutes early. Show up early, get a parking. It's really awkward if you can't find parking at a busy company. That's so horrible because then you're looking all the time. So go inside at least five minutes early. Take the extra time before the practice year, your, your agenda, what you want to tell them. Uh, and bring some stuff with you. Any idea what you should bring to an interview? Extra copies of your resume. Yes. How many? Okay, good number. Um, bring, if you're going to meet with one person, actually five is just a good number in general, but bring enough that, well, what's that right there? That's a copy of my classes. Oh, your transcript right on, break the ceiling. <laughs> if you have good grades. Yeah, no, bring, bring several <laughs> copies of your resume so you have at least one for yourself so they don't ask you a question like, so what did you do with this job? Oh, boy, that was five years ago. I don't even know. Was it, can I see the resume? That's awkward. So, yeah, bring several copies of your resume. Bring your business cards. I usually bring this guy with me, a little portfolio. So I have my questions and my resume and all that jazz in there. Yeah. I was just wondering, can you have, I, I've always wanted to, but have your, like, resume out or even questions that you wanted to? Like, I always want to memorize everything, but do you think it would be inappropriate oh, to, like... To bring them back to I questions. really want to. Unquestionably, bring your... I always... I'm glad you asked that, Jamie, because I would never... <laughs> I always remember, like... I forget right away. So if I didn't bring a list, I just wouldn't ask. I'd ask really dumb questions. Yeah, I always bring a list. Because it just shows you're prepared and they're, they're okay with that. You say, hey, I've got a few questions. You mind if I... And then they'll say, you have any questions? Yeah, one second. You, you'll pull them out. Do you think it's proper to have like your resume and like side notes? Could you do that? Resume? On your resume? Or, or, yeah, have a resume and then maybe have some side notes for yourself. So are, are you saying like next to your last job, you have a little side note of things you want to talk to them about? Well, yeah, or points that maybe like my talking about maybe experience you know maybe don't put that on the resume because then it looks like you're like someone marked it up but you know with that like bring that bring that list your list of questions with you and like i'll just often like i'll sit down in the meeting and i'll just, I'll, I'll just open the sucker up and i'll have i'll have my i'll have a piece of paper right here and then i'll have my sheet to take notes and so keep your questions right there with your prompts i found Write them handwritten because if it's upside down, you know, people try to write upside down, they can't read your writing upside down, that's for sure. So just make a few prompts for yourself upside down, and that's totally fine. It just looks like you're, you, you thought of an extra question at the last minute or something. 
So I would do that. And I take, I'm a big note taker. And yeah. So I'll say in an interview sometimes, as I'll bring my portfolio just oh, like yeah. Dan, and I'll just say, you know, is it okay if I take a few notes? That's, you know, I, that is how I process things mm -hmm. in my old age. So, and then, and I also will have my list of questions there because I'm the same way. I don't, want, I want to have the, you know, I've spent time coming up with good questions, and I don't want to take the risk of forgetting. And people, no one's ever said. I don't, I don't think anyone's ever held it against me that I had my questions down there, took a few notes here and there. Just for you, know, you might want to jog something down that, it, that would be a good question at the end of the interview. And, and the same, even for last week we talked about informational interviewing, I'd bring a list then too, because if nothing else, people I've had people say, oh, I really appreciate you brought a list of shows you're organized. Even if I know them in my head, I'll still bring the list. So yeah, it's, I think it's totally okay to have, have a list. And invest in some little sort of binder, bring a notebook. If you have a portfolio of your work, like not a portfolio, but an actual portfolio of samples of your work, bring that in too, because you're showing them, I mean, especially if you're in something creative or artistic, bring them samples of what you've done. So if you lead training, what I do is I have all my workshops in a binder and I bring them people say, here's the workbook, here's the slides, this is what I present. So they have, an, I mean, bring that with you. Why not? Show them what, you, <laughs> what you've done. If you've created any materials, show them this is what you've created. Say, I, I'm a training professional. I can put together training materials. Um, yeah, so I'm a script writer. <laughs> bring your script with you. If you have any, if you have any written. So feel free to bring a portfolio. I know, Patty, you said you brought one when you interviewed here. And it, I mean, it just shows tangible bits of your work. So bring those stuff and have a conversation in the interview often. People just get grilled and you got to remember you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you because you're giving them skills. They don't, you don't, they don't owe, you don't owe them anything. So have a conversation, ask them questions as they go along. You can ask them, was that the type of information you're looking for after a question or do you want more information about that? Ask them questions as you go along. Feel free to pepper a few questions as, uh, they, they may ask you questions say, oh, could you give me an example or what's that like here? Make it a dialogue so you don't get grilled. It'll make it a lot easier on you. And I find if I go in for a conversation, I'm a lot less nervous. Often people won't even call it an interview. They'll call it a meeting and you know it's an interview. So just go in for a meeting and uh, have a conversation. Make a new friend. Find any way you can build rapport. If you see something about Hawaii on their desk, and you make, whatever, make some conversation about, oh, I've been there, yada, yada. It, I mean, ironically, research has shown and common sense would bear witness to that if you build good rapport with people, a recruiter is more likely to view you favorably and you'll have a better outcome in your interview. And it just makes common sense, but do that. Next, be enthusiastic and extroverted. It's amazing. There's actually been tons of scientific research on interviews. One of the things they found as a good predictor is extroverted behavior traits. Now, some of you may be saying, I'm not really an extrovert. This is kind of going to be a bummer. Well, guess what the good news is? If any of you have ever taken the Myers-Briggs or any assessment that tells you you're an extrovert, introvert, and lumps you in a bucket, well, the good news is you look at the question and you know how to answer it to make yourself an extrovert that day if you wanted to. So anyone can fake being an extrovert. It doesn't have to mean shoot from the hip, but you just go, I mean, just act like an extrovert. Be Smile a lot. Be really friendly. Give a firm handshake always. Um, and be enthusiastic. It's, it's amazing they've shown that that actually is predictive of interview success. <laughs> so, Gabe, you look like you had a question. I don't think so. No, I don't <laughs> well, if you have it again, throw it out there. So yeah, just act extrovert. If you're not naturally an extrovert, don't have to be buck wild, but just act, just act enthusiastic. No big deal, especially if you're excited about the job. And promote yourself. It's, this doesn't mean you have to brag or just talk about yourself all the whole time. But feel free to talk about your skills and accomplishments. And if you, really, if you don't want to just say, oh, I did this and that, you can talk about, well, my boss always comments on the fact that I have excellent customer service. I frequently get comments from customers about this and that. If you have other people talking about you in that regard, it takes a little pressure off yourself. And it shows you're not an arrogant snob. Um, but you got to think, they're bringing you in to talk about yourself. That's the point of the meeting. So feel free to promote yourself. Use body language, make eye contact the entire time. Never take your gaze off that list for a quick second um, because people view it as dishonest for some reason and research has shown that if you have eye contact the whole, the whole time and you lean forward, have a good handshake and smile often, 
you're more likely to have a favorable interview. I kid you not. They've done tons of research on this. <laughs> Be honest. Never inflate. If you were working in a group, don't say you saved the company. Talk about how you're on a task force or on a group and talk about your role in the group and, and the way you impacted that result. But don't make it sound like you did the entire thing. If it's in, if it's in your industry, they maybe know people who, or they could find out about it. It'll somehow come back to you and then it's going to be really awkward when you don't get the job because you just kind of lied a little bit. It's all about the company. Everything is about how you can help them make money and save money. We've hammered that a bunch, but it's all about what you can do for them. Next, be clear, concise, and relevant. I can't tell you how many people ramble and they'll go off and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm really good at training. And one time I brought in brownies to help training and, you know, it was a really big hit. And my mom makes great brownies. She got the recipe from my grandma and grandpa and they came from Ireland. I don't care. <laughs> I, maybe it was cool you brought the brownies in and brought a treat to people, but stop it there. Be clear and be concise and relevant. Don't go, tell a story, but don't add details that aren't necessary and make it relevant to the job. Often people, they feel anxious and nervous, and so they fill space by talking about random stuff. And <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Lastly, be positive. This is very critical in interviews and your entire job search process. If you had a bad last boss, or you hate your job now, or you didn't like your entire career before, or you picked the wrong major and you hate your professors, don't say that. Never say anything negative because if you go and interview and they say, why are you leaving this job? Why, what about your job? Are you, dis are you dissatisfied with anything? Don't give them anything to make them think that, okay, the way they're talking about he or she's talking about this job is the way they're talking about me and my company in five years when they're gone because they're not going to be here forever. So always, always be positive. If you're laid off, don't, don't, don't act bitter because you're laid off. Talk about how, you know, they, the company was running out of money, they had to reorganize and they had to cut the half the department and a lot of people were, were laid off. Make it as impersonal as you possibly can so that it shows that, you know, I, I completely understand it was really a big disappointment but if I was a manager, I, I'd understand I'd probably have to make the same decision and, and, and just because of the, the situation they're in. So in that case, it shows them that you're optimistic, you're not out there to defame anyone and you're not going to defame them when you leave. So. Those are some tips on how to act. Treat it like a first date. Put your best foot forward. One question, yes. sorry, on uh, having a conversation. Um, I know it, just normal interpersonal interaction, clarifying questions, inter, uh, active listening, that's a big deal. Oh yeah. Uh, do you want to, even, even just once or twice in an interview, do you want to re get, rephrase a question and see if you're understanding it right before you answer it, or do you just plunge if in? If you're confused, the, I would only ask that for a couple of reasons. One, if they are really unclear and you actually need it, or if it's a darn good question and you're trying to think of the answer. So if they asked you something like, what was the your most memorable moment in your college career? And you're like, crap, I don't think of that ever. And you say, wow, you can rephrase, say, wow, that's a really good question. So the most memorable moment in my college career, and it gives you a little, buys you a little bit of time to think. So use it to buy time or if they were just really unclear. Um, that'll probably happen more often with hiring managers, depending on what field you're in. The recruiters are usually trained and they're hired to be interpersonal. So you may have a hiring manager who's not as interpersonal. So feel free to use that only if you, only if you need to <laughs> buy some time. Good question though, Gabe. You're shooting good ones on me today. <laughs> All you guys are. So we're going to close up soon because it's, it's 8 o'clock right now. Last thing I want to say, close strongly. Make sure you leave all your cards on the table. At the end, often people will say, is there anything else we should know? And make that your opportunity to say, well, based on what I've learned so far and this, this, and this, I think it would be a great position. Let them know you love this job. Just like a spouse or significant other, they want to hear I love you. Tell them you love the job. Be enthusiastic because they want to hire people who have 110% enthusiasm. I was talking to someone recently and they're talking about how recruiters across the board agree with this. They don't want to hire people who are so-so. Be enthusiastic about the job. Let them know you love it. Even let them know, you know, this is a job. I would love to do this job. Let them know that. If the opportunity arose and you guys offered me this job, I would be really excited to consider an offer. And lastly, ask them what the next steps are so you have a little bit of peace of mind and you know when to follow up if they don't get back to you first. Um, question. Um, I've been involved in some hiring uh, mm -hmm. 
at my current job, and we've had some interviewees who were who came across like really strong. Like I am, I am the strongest. Like I am the best fit for this role. And in some of those, like okay, seriously, too much. a little bit too much. But at the other hand, like being like, I feel like I'm a really great candidate for this. It like it's at the same time like not being strong enough. Like where's where's the balance? Yeah, that's uh. <laughs> so you don't want to be the one who just pushes people over. You don't right. want to say. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm the thinking, person. I'm thinking I'm good. Time, like, I could be a really good good mm -hmm. for this if you think so. But yeah. whatever, it's up to you guys. So, well, whatever. one thing I, I've I've heard, and that's actually, uh, I'd, I'd be curious to hear your opinion of what you saw was most effective. But one thing you could say is, you know, I know you have a lot of other cancer who are probably really well qualified. However, based on what you've told me and my skills, I feel really confident that I can do this job, and I would be delighted to accept it if the if the opportunity came. So you let them know you want it. Uh, it, it's firm enough where you say, I'm committed to it, but you're not like going out there just throwing yourself at their feet. What From, from what interviews you, you've had and been involved in, what what do you think has been resonated most with you? Um, I, I think people who seem really sure in their own skills, because I guess that's more like, they. it's it's more they, as long as they're selling themselves and they're they're certain in their own skills, that's mm -hmm. what we can go off of. It's more when they're telling us what to think in terms of you need to hire me. Right, exactly. <laughs> Your company's good. <laughs> the, the, yeah, that 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 I can be best for you and what you need. I can fill that role. Mm -hmm. Isn't isn't that was more what what was really off putting. Um, was the really you you know what we need was kind of the was what was off but just being more secure in their role was that those were more the candidates that we were leaning towards so but being being confident but not being being confident in their own skills yeah. versus being confident in the job I guess this is so like dating like seriously no, like, really, I, it totally like, totally is like, totally person but a woman wants someone who's very sure of themselves That's exactly same, Ex exactly same it's, it's just like dating so it makes you beg the question if you're going to interview can you be good at the anyhow but no but seriously so I mean then be be enthusiastic I guess it'd be like yeah like be enthusiastic but but genuine too so if you're not the type of person who's super energetic be a, you know be energetic but don't be to the point where it's I guess it's like you know faker in your face because that's like the salesman at you know the store who keeps trying to sell you something you don't want and you're like all right come on so that's the last thing to close to and then lastly I won't go into this too much but do your follow up send them a thank you card and email outlining some of the things they talked about and how you think you'd be a good fit for them you absolutely must do this it's not really an option if you can't get if you can't get their name and card. I mean, then you can't send them a, 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 a card, but you should be able to send them at least an email. And always ask them at the end, hey, may I have your business card? And give them yours and follow up like that. Kind of finish the, the cycle strong. So to recap, and then they'll be impressed. To recap, we talked about before the interview, you gotta research, know your value, create your parts, practice, 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 do mock interviews. In the interview, have a conversation. Ask them questions, good questions. Be enthusiastic, present your value, at the end, follow up with a thank you card and an email. With that, thank you guys for coming. It's been a pleasure to talk to most of you who came the last couple weeks. And best of luck in your own job searches. Feel free to connect with Patty and I. I have business cards if you guys want to keep in touch or ask any questions in the future. And I'd love to hear when you actually land somewhere because it's cool to see um, if anything we did was helpful and to hear how you guys are doing. So that's what inspires Patty and I to do what we do. So. Well, let's give Dan a hand. I mean, he's done a great well, thank job. you. And Patty, too.